Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the podcast that nobody asked for. This is John over here and I also have Andrew. I'm Andrew. Yep, I'm Andrew. I have a YouTube channel called Andrew's Angles. And uh, yeah, just happy to be on the vlog with you. Alright, nice. We are going to talk about how we started out with YouTube channels. Okay, hold up. Let me just back to talk about why did I decide to start a podcast. It's more the fact that I got things that I want to talk about. I probably want to upload all these in between my regular uploads. When I enter uni, I have quite some high effort videos to do. So that's why I want to have some content in between. La. How about let's quickly share what kind of content that we make. For me, right, I think most people know me for all my army related content. There's the 9 weeks of BMT 9 minutes, that video. There's the what each rank means in the SAF video. A lot of dumb skits about yeah. different situations of people in the army. Mm. I don't know, what, what do you think about them? Yeah, think, you got watch, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I do watch your video. I think it's quite, it's quite entertaining, it's quite funny. I think a lot of people can relate to it. Uh. Yeah, and just yeah. Like, look back on their army days and just laugh about it. Yeah, so I guess that's why I enjoy just being, trying to be as relatable as possible, trying to get experiences from what my friends say or what I myself have and then put it together into a very quick, like, one-minute skit. Yeah. yeah. I sort of have an off-season right now because I'm just waiting for uni to start and then I have brand new type of content that I want to try. Uh. That's for me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So okay, how about you? Okay, okay I'll oh. say first. So, am I, later, later I'll ask you the question. Okay, yeah, so, sure. for me, I also do NS-related content uh, but now I'm moving yeah. more towards like vlogs with my friends and sometimes my family. Mm. My most... Like, my most viewed videos would be my very first episode of my NS journey, like, the day I enlisted, yeah. and also, how to fold a smart fall. Yeah, those are my two most popular videos. Uh. Okay. The rest is just documenting my one year, 10 months in the army. Oh. So, total, I did about 21 mm. episodes, if I'm not wrong. For now, because I'm in uni, having my break, actually, I plan to, ha- I make, I plan to make more vlogs, but been too busy going out lah. So now I just focus on my hiking vlogs. So maybe next semester onwards, uh, I can find more time to make more vlogs and more different type of content. Or. It's quite understandable how college or uni makes you really busy. Which also yep. makes me wonder, will I be super busy and then not be able to create content? Because that's still something that I want to do. But maybe I have to step it down. Uh, I mean, I guess it all comes down to your time management or. Yeah, and it depends on your course also. Because for me, engineering courses is very content heavy. So it's like every day is the same. You go to school, go for lessons, you go back to hall or you go back home, uh, it's study and then sleep and then the whole cycle repeats. So it's like I don't, I didn't really have time to make anything. Ooh, yeah, that's something that I worry about. So, but, I, but well. I guess for you, I guess for you it's good because like now you say you're kind of having a break, you're making all these podcasts mm. to like, um, upload if you are if you are too busy to upload other content during school period mm. la. so at least you have like backup yeah. for me I don't have any I didn't really record any like other content so it's like if I don't have anything means I won't upload anything but for you if let's say mm. you don't you didn't make any videos right at least you have this podcast to upload you know as a, like a yeah. backup yeah so I guess for you it's yeah, good I, la. I, I try to do it weekly nowadays my past few videos is like Reviewing something in 10 seconds. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah so. those, those are like super dumb. It's just one punchline and then play a soundtrack from that show and then just, just share like one line. That one is so mm. stupid. I probably won't do that anymore, but yeah, that's, that's what I try to do. Even if it's just 10 seconds video. So I don't mm. know. See how. All right, let's share about how do we start our video creation hobby. For me, it would be because I was pretty born in army. So that's why I wanted to go do something, have some creative outlet. And then I think doing videos is the easiest one. Uh. I mean, the first few videos I did was on the, you know, you have the army, the marching songs. Yeah. That's the one that I started with. It's more the fact that I was pretty bored during the, you know, after you POP, then got some, got quite some days. Yeah. It's just do nothing. Yep. Yeah. I just go record myself on Audacity, just doing all the different voices, even the sergeant scolding them. Mm. And then I upload them onto. No, I actually first shared it with 
my platoon and then they enjoyed it. Then I realized, oh, okay, this is something that I probably can just upload it on YouTube. Yeah. So it started off with, I'm pretty bored, let's just create something and hopefully people will come across it and enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's the case for most people, like how they started. Okay, so for mm. my, my side of my story, right, is, okay, we have to rewind back to circuit breaker period. So I was waiting for right. enlistment. So during poly, I had this like overseas attachment program, like six weeks in China with my friends. So I borrowed my uncle's GoPro. I recorded some vlogs. Mm. And then fast forward to the circuit breaker period, right? There was nothing to do. Ma. You cannot go out. You cannot do anything. So I didn't want to be like a couch potato. I didn't want to like just Netflix all day and just rot at home. Ma. So I thought, yeah. okay, why not? Why not just try and edit the vlogs, you know, upload to YouTube so that my friends can watch, like look back on the memories. Yeah, after that, my friends were like, eh, quite, they were quite supportive of the idea. La. They, they say, why not you try making other videos also? So, that's what I did. La. I think my first uh, video other than the China vlogs, right, was, uh, I think, a uh, lookbook. La. I try out different outfits because I, I buy a lot of shoes. Ma. So, okay. I try out different outfits with the different shoes. Then, that's my very first video. Lo. And then, after that, while I was waiting for enlistment, I was, you know, very nervous la, about uh, NS. So I go online and search about NS stuff. Then I realized that not many people right upload about their NS journey. And most yeah. people just upload about taking IPVT uh, or like when they POP uh, or whatnot. And then that's that's about it. Mm. So that kind of like sparked something in me or uh, like, hey, maybe uh, documenting your NS journey could be a good idea. So I just tried. At first, my mm. original plan was not my NS journey. It was just my BMT journey. So until POP, uh, then yeah. I stopped. Then after I uploaded the first episode, right, during one of my book out, then after I see it gain some traction. I'm like, okay, I think okay. people quite yeah. quite enjoy it. So after POP, yeah. I see how. So because after POP, I was going to Air Force, ma. then I got the opportunity mm. to travel overseas. So I think that is like something different from normal NS journeys, I guess. So mm. I took the opportunity oh, and then continue my Air Force journey, my SES journey, and then going back to Takong as a sergeant and then ending it where I first started. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. how I started. It's like, yep. come, it's like your NS journey come full circle, which is kind of yep. nice in a way. Mm. Yeah. And, and is it also the fact that you have recruits that will also know of your content, or like watch it before they mm. some of my Some of my recruits actually, they recognize me like from different platoons. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, then they say, eh, are you Sergeant Andrew? Do you, you do the YouTube? And it's like, just makes me feel like good uh, about myself. Like, as, as, yeah. like trying to help, you know, people before they come into NS. Like transitioning from mm. civilian to national service. Feels good. Feels so I'm good. looking at your first few videos right now from Olders, right? Mm. Like, in the past you did, yeah, you did vlogs uh, about, some of them about football. Yeah. But those were just for fun. Uh. There, there, was, there was no... I feel like there was no purpose, there was no meaning, there was no story in those vlogs. You know, okay, for example, like Casey Neistat, okay. right? He has yeah. he has a flow to his vlogs. But for mm -hmm. my older videos, there was, to me, la, I feel like there was nothing. It was just, what, a few people kicking a ball. That's it. Mm. But I feel like as time goes, as time went on, right, I feel like I did improve a bit in my uh, vlogging or like video editing skills. Yeah, at mm. least there's somewhat the, of a story. Okay. Yeah. Is it in the past there wasn't? Yeah, in the past there wasn't some narrative, is it? Yeah, don't that's have. why. That's for no, me. You know just... that freaking story curve that you yeah, yeah, yeah. build up climax, yep. conclusion. There was nothing. Uh. it was just I had nothing better better to do. I just go and hang out with friends. Okay, just just block for their memories. I mean, also. okay. I mean, in the, in the past, like, back, way back, I also didn't know what I was doing. You know, I started with making rap music. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I was like, okay, actually, I, I also want to do some comedy, not just rap, because my raps would be, like, too, considered too emotional. Mm. Then I realized, okay, I, I actually can provide more value to more people doing my comedy videos than music, which is already a very saturated thing. Mm. So, yeah, I just did a bunch of random stuff. And then I eventually realized, yeah, I can make a lot of content about ARMY. So that's where I went. Like, I think in the first 
year or first two years, no one really knows what they're doing. Mm, that's true. When it comes to YouTube. Yeah. So it's it's alright, I guess. How about let's talk about how how do we know each other? Do you, do you want to say or? Um, okay. I I only know honestly. I only knew you from TikTok. Like I saw your skits and stuff, and then you said you're yeah. starting a YouTube channel. Then after that, I think if I'm not wrong, you were the first. You were the one that contacted me, right? That you wanted to meet. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, and then we just met for lunch, and then that's that's how we met. I guess. Yeah, it's also it's also the fact that I actually watch your content. Uh. Before you enlisted, right? I remember, yeah, dude, I, I think the night before I enlisted, then mm. I couldn't sleep. I was pretty, pretty nervous, actually. Mm. So I would be past 12 midnight, you know, I got lack of sleep. I know I need to wake up early tomorrow, but I still decided to watch some videos about BMT to help calm me down. And I think your videos, your vlogs or reflection is what helped during that part. Uh. So that was pretty cool. And then the fact that you then w- watch my videos, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm. How about the first time people found your channel, how do you feel? Because I remember for me is, people usually know me from TikToks, honestly. Not really for mm. YouTube channel. Which, okay, I guess I'm fine with it, though I don't really post on my TikTok nowadays. I'd rather people go to my YouTube channel. But people first knew me from TikTok. When I was walking inside my military camp, Walking past, you know, going to a cook house and all. Then there was this uh, cadet, I think. He walked past me there and said, Hey, you're the TikTok one. Uh. And I was like, okay, yeah, that was me. And then my friends who were around me were pretty shook. They were pretty, mm. like, surprised because usually, yeah, I know that my TikToks might end up on my friends for you page because they confirm want to look at my content. But yeah. the fact that someone that I didn't know at all saw it for the so recognize me inside a military camp that was pretty insane. Yeah. yeah. You? I guess I I share the same sentiments as you law. Like I said just now, like some of my recruits actually recognize me. And then there's also another time, uh before I took recruits, like during my uh I, I guess Lao period, um, like I was having lunch at the cookhouse with my friend. And then this mm. group of three or four recruits they came up to me and they asked, Oh, are you Sergeant Andrew? They're like Yes. Why? Yeah. Uh, then I thought they mistook me as their sergeant. Uh, like, you know, ask for timing, what time to form up and stuff. Okay. So I just like gave the confused look. Then they said, oh my god, I watched your video and whatnot. So it's just, it just feels good lor, that people mm. watch and then they, they, it helped them prepare. Like like you, it helped it help you prepare yeah. for your NS or, you know, calm, calm you guys down or whatnot. It just, yeah lor, feels good to help. Lah. Yeah. I think it's also the fact that usually when we pre- create videos and upload them, we might only see the numbers, right? Mm. Maybe the num- the amount of views mm. or following, but we kind of forget that they are literally real people who were influenced by our videos, which is really insane. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> I can't... It's kind of cool how I could have a bunch of little dumb NS skits that I thought to myself, yeah, they're pretty funny. And then it helped someone through their time in BMT. Yeah. It's so, and then you have people that want to share your videos to like their cousins who know they are going to enlist soon. That, mm. that is pretty insane for me. Mm. Yeah. That's how I see it. And actually, mm. right. Okay. <laughs> okay. S- story about what happened yesterday, right? So, mm. okay. Of this recording right now, right? I'm, I haven't entered... Uh, uni orientation yet. Okay, so there's this group formed for my orientation group. There yep. were there was one person that recognized say, hey, I think I recognize you in the group chat itself. I wanted and they say, do you post TikToks? <laughs> and I was like, bro, I, I didn't expect it to happen so soon. Eh. Mm. I, I thought I could just keep lay low. Um maybe when you know this kind of groups, they want to maybe have a long list of Instagram handles to later yep. follow, right? Then later, they go to my Instagram, then they go to my YouTube or TikTok, then they see my content. But I mm. already got one, one person inside that I recognize. Then I just uh, 
try to deflect by texting, oh, people always say that to me, lol, like that. <laughs> then later, another person came in and said, yeah, yes, yeah, I wanted to ask that. Oh, so, okay. I don't know where, where I'm at. <laughs> this, is quite, this is quite interesting. Because I'm pretty sure people have preconceived notions when, they, when, when people recognize me as on TikTok. So, I don't know how to confront with my orientation group when I see them in like a few days as of recording this. I mean, that one, just go with the flow. It, it, it depends on how you mm. want to, whether you want to like acknowledge that you are the guy, the guy on TikTok or whether you just want to mm. really just keep a low profile. But I think like what I told you when, when we met, uh, a lot of people yeah. come over and recognize you. Uh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So, it all depends on you. Lor. If you want to accept it, then tell them, yeah, yeah, I'm the guy, I'm the guy, then sure. Or if you want to, I don't know how you want to deflect it, uh, but yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> I think it's fine if people come up to me like that, then I say, yes, it's me. But I don't want to be the first one to initiate, like, uh, hey, bro, you, you don't know me or what? Uh, that's so, uh, uh, understand, that's understand. so, like, prideful. Yeah, yeah, great. I don't want to be that guy. I think it's fine if people are able to separate who I am when I'm interacting with them and mm who I am when I'm on my videos. Uh. Because honestly, there's quite a... There, there's actually quite some difference between how I am on my videos versus when I'm in real life with people. I can be quite reserved. Uh. Mm. That's what I would say. Do, do people in uni recognize you? No. And like, how do you react? Oh. Yeah, they don't. So, it's fine. It's only, but, I guess, only NS stuff. La. NS, in yeah, NS, yeah. then... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you like just loiter around military camps, people <laughs> recognize really? you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I guess if I start creating content in uni, uh, like maybe day in the life or uh, or something like that, then maybe people might recognize. But that one, I had I had plans of doing that, but didn't mm. have the time to lah. So hopefully next semester can. Uh. Yeah, dude. I mean, you, you can you can give it a try. But I understand mm. there are quite some YouTubers that I personally enjoy and they keep giving the reason of, oh, I'm inside college, I don't have a lot of time. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Up, up to you, man. Yeah. Let's see how. Uh, mm. yep. Okay, I got a question for uh, you, actually. Yeah? Like, speaking about YouTube, right? Like, do you, what are mm. your end goals or what's your vision for your YouTube channel? Oh. Yeah. Hmm... I mean, I only have a really short-term goal, which is hit 1,000 subs, which I'm damn close to it. I'm at 965. Mm. Yeah. So, by God, I I probably can hit that by the end of the year. Mm. Projected to. Uh. Um, okay, okay. What's my angle? I honestly don't know. I think I just want to try to provide as much value as possible to people, which is a very vague thing to do. But maybe, okay, maybe in NS, make people have a laugh and all. Um, maybe in uni, I can try to make people enjoy uni more. I have not, I don't know what's my end goal, but I probably can see myself doing this throughout university. But that's kind of optimistic considering I haven't even entered uni. Mm. So, see how. Uh, mm. Okay. Mm. Mm, for me, I I also have the the short term goal of hitting one thousand. Uh. Uh, I'm at eight hundred and wait, let me check. I'm at eight hundred and twenty seven, <laughs> right now. Okay. So, okay. uh, yeah, still quite far. Uh, but yeah, look, for now, hit one thousand, uh, subscribers, four thousand watch hours. You know, get some monetization. Mm. Uh, and yeah. then for the long term, honestly, I think it's hard to be a full time YouTuber in Singapore. Yeah, uh, it's very hard to reach like the KC nine set level, but yep. I guess I'm gonna do this for like my own like fulfillment or for my own enjoyment. Yeah, also. you know, just share, share my life, share some snippets of my life with the public. Or not everything, but mm. just some. Uh, yeah, hopefully, okay. hopefully, my next two years of uni, I can try and put up something at least like can relate. Like uni people can relate lah. Rather than just NS stuff and like vlogs yeah. that honestly people don't really care about. But it's just mm. yeah, for the yeah, fun of it. Yeah, in that sense then I guess two of us are about to try and enter this new era, right? Of making yep. content related to uni students. 
Yeah. So, okay, let's see how. And I think mm. it's hard to make it a full-time thing unless you really have a huge traction. And even then, it's quite volatile, right? How much you make per month. So, yeah, correct. I, I don't see myself doing this full-time. I think it's more of a mm. side thing. Yep, and then, I don't know, uh, when, I, when I start working, maybe I'll have it. I don't know. I haven't even got the monetized yet. So, mm. let's just see how it goes. But I genuinely do enjoy creating videos. Uh, so, mm. I think that will help me in the long run. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, you can both, you know, grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm not too concerned about the metrics honestly it's just that mm. 1000 is a very nice round number to have yep and perhaps it shows some legitimacy i think i mean i'm i'm at dude actually i'm very bad at getting people to subscribe to my channel because i have a lot quite a lot of channel views mm. and then my <laughs> subscriber count is really bad which is mm. kind of interesting i guess people just come and go when it comes to my youtube content which is all right. Mm. So, yeah. I feel like, honestly, I feel like the more, the more you ask people to subscribe, the more they won't. Like so, for me, I stop. Mm. I kind of don't really say the oh please subscribe to my YouTube channel all this. Yeah. Mm. So I guess it's just natural. I just if you all want to subscribe, subscribe. If you don't want, then don't. Want. But mm. please subscribe to John. Please subscribe to me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I do try to. I think. Pretty much every video I still put subscribe, but it's a very a yeah, few yeah. seconds, and it's at the very mm. end of the video. Same I don't really thing. get people who want to put it at the start of the video when mm. you haven't even watched it. So yep. I don't know, but then again, maybe that's why my subscriber to view ratio is so bad. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, slowly, slowly grow from here, lor. Yeah, I think okay, okay. Would you rather have? one video that goes super viral or slowly but surely build up your like following or what uh, which one you prefer wow it's gonna be hard eh? i mean honestly okay, I, if you have one video that goes super super yeah. viral then there will still be some there will still be people that view your channel then you can still grow from there mm. you slowly grow i guess it's like same same but different no? but mm. i think i would prefer like the slow and consistent growth Rather than mm. just one one hit wonder kind of thing. Yeah. I think yeah. if you do the just one video, then too many people remember you for that one video. Yeah. And I think it gets very sickening even a few years later, you're trying to put out new content and then yeah. people still remember you for that one thing. Yeah. And then they say about how your old content isn't as uh your new content isn't as good as your old content, which is how mm. sad. So I personally would prefer the slow grind and all. But mm. I think people nowadays don't really see that. It's more of because a lot of people around our age at least enjoy putting out TikToks, right? And yeah. it's very easy for just one of it to go viral. It's it's mm. so easy to get a huge following suddenly on TikTok. Mm. They don't really I guess our generation doesn't really understand the whole grind out for a few months or a few years thing mm. but I guess also nowadays people's attention span is getting shorter so maybe they mm. can't sit yeah, the for short content. they can't sit for minutes long YouTube video they rather like a few seconds long TikTok videos kind of thing yeah maybe this podcast is a bad thing to do <laughs> 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 imagine? Mm. Uh, it's, 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 it's also the fact I see on TikTok you have uh, podcast, but they have like really short clips for yeah. podcasts. Correct, correct, correct. I don't Maybe know you should do I that. I want to do that. Mm, like a highlights kind of thing. Uh. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll think about it. Uh. But that seems a bit too much work. Let, mm. Let's just see how in uni. Uh. Okay. Anyways, okay. we just gotta see how long I can even do this whole podcast thing. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe okay. I'll stop soon. I don't know. Yeah. That's all for this first episode. Um, yep. Do the usual things that YouTubers ask you to do. And we'll see you in the second episode. Alright. Bye.